welcome again to yet another time of fellowship around the Word of God. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. The most important thing is that God is on top and God is in charge. Because He is in charge, we shall rejoice and be glad. Today, I'm inviting you to the Word of the Living God. And we are going to be reading from the Old Testament, from the book of Exodus. From the book of Exodus, chapter 12. As we read from chapter 12, I'm going to start from verse number 3, where the Bible says, Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house, and if the house be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. I want to continue to verse number five and six. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the gods, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Verse number eight. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with the bitter herbs, and pray to meat without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over a fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave anything of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. These people were given this message on a very important day. And it was a message that God gave them because he was about to do something in the land. And I have to give a title to this message for ease of following, for ease of understanding what we are all about. Today I've given this title uh, of this message that I'll be sharing with you. Are you indoors or outdoor for the night? Are you indoors or outdoor for tonight? And that is a question asking somebody wanting to know where he's going to spend the evening. Will you be indoors this evening or you are going out? Whether for dinner or whatsoever, but I just want to bring to our attention these two words, to be indoors and to be outdoors. To be indoors and to be outdoors. The question goes, will you be or are you indoors tonight or this evening or you will be outdoors? I want to move on here. The whole scriptures that we have read or the scripture that we have read shows us and tells us what God had intended on that particular day. This was a very important day in the history of the children of Israel. He tells them that the day is a day when they must pick a lamb for every family. Every family must have a lamb. And the lamb, excuse me, and the lamb must be tested for 14 days. It must be without blemish. No defect in any of those lambs for each family. And they were going to slaughter that animal. And then, after slaughtering the animal, they were supposed to roast it and eat it right on the same day of the slaughter. And then as they do that, he tells them how they were going to eat it. They must have themselves get it up. They will dress up and get with a belt and tuck their clothes in the belt and then eat it in a state of readiness or in a readiness mode. In other words, they must demonstrate that they are about to leave in a mode of departure. 
in a mode of departure. Now, the time came for God to conclude what he started when he brought Moses into Egypt. When God brought Moses into Egypt, he said, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, who is this God that I would obey him? And God began to manifest his power and demonstrate who he was by punishing the gods of Egypt by the ten plagues, which I may not be able to mention all of them now, but all the ten plagues that represented the gods of Egypt. Now, I want to bring to our attention that during this evening, as I'm asking the question, where will you be in the evening? Will you be indoors or outdoors? Now the question came because this evening something was going to happen. God had told them that they must slaughter the animal and then the blood of this animal must be put on the post, on the top post of the houses where they will be. And not only post or put the blood on the top post and then go out. They were supposed to put the blood, apply the blood on both posts. And as they were going to do that, then they were supposed to be inside. Now, this is how you are going to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your stuff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now, when the God's time comes, there will be no delay. When God's appointed time comes for his action and for his manifestation, there will be no delay. It will be good for us when God's timing comes and the appropriate time comes for God to act to find us in the state of readiness. In this evening, he tells them how to be ready for what is about to happen. He tells them that they must have their, their cloak tucked and their, in their belts, sandals ready and their, on their feet and the stuff in their hand. And then he says, when you eat, don't eat leisurely, eat in haste. That means the time had ticked. It was just a matter of minutes for God to move in the land of Israel, I'm sorry, in the land of Egypt to demonstrate his power. Eat in haste time is against you. And this is what they were doing, going to do. When they were eating, they must demonstrate that they are ready and about to go. What was to happen on that evening? What was going to happen that evening? We are told that in verse number 12, on that same night when we eat this Passover, on that same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. I am giving you instructions that you must slaughter a blemish and non-blemish lamb. A non-blemish lamb, a, non -spot, a, a spotless lamb, a, a, a non-blemish, put it that way. And the lamb must be spotless. And when that happens, when that happens, I want that blood for each family of the lamb that is without blemish. And as you do that, the blood apply, but you eat the meat right inside, not next to the house, but right inside the house. And you will have the doors locked up while you are inside doing the eating of the meat. Now, God says, on that same night, while you are busy inside your houses, when you are indoors, I will be busy outdoor myself dealing with the gods of the Egyptians and dealing with Pharaoh, the man who is very much insolent. I will be dealing with his stubbornness to demonstrate that if a question, if a person challenges God, I will demonstrate who I am. And when God was punishing the gods of Egypt and dealing with Pharaoh, on the other hand, he was dealing with the people of God, preparing for their departure, preparing for their liberation, preparing for them to move out of the land of slavery. Very interesting here. On the same night, while you enjoy the Passover, you eat the flesh, the meat inside the house. While you are indoors, I will be out there doing something. 
Now, what was he going to do? He says, I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. May I just bring this to our attention? Do you know or did you know that God is a God that is very, very jealous? He does not want the combination when people begin to have multiplicity of gods, then it means they are pushing God out of the circumference. They are putting God out of the epicenter. And if they do that, it means that they don't need God. They may need him by lip service, but God needs the central part of the people. He needs the central part of the families. That's why he said the Passover lamb must be eaten by families in the house. Now, this God, this God on that evening, when he says, I will pass through Egypt, can you imagine? He was passing through. He was passing through. I'm going to bring something on that one. He was passing through Egypt. And he says, as I pass through Egypt, there is going to be disaster. But then there is a passing through and a passing over. Now, there are two compounds here, or two distinct peoples. There are people that know no God. People that boast on magic, on magic, sorcery, and all kinds of powers and, and, and all these kind of, 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 of incantations. And on the other side, there are people that know God. There are people that cried to God. There are people that were set aside. They were looked in with contempt because they were slaves in the land. They were looked down upon the Egyptians because of who they were. And then on that particular night, God had to make a distinction in this fashion. Number one, he says, I'm going to pass through Egypt. And I pray that when God passes through my country, when God passes through my land, when God passes through Africa, I pray that he would help us and make us remember we don't need to perish with the gods of our land. We don't need to punish with the gods that will be judged by God. What was happening in Egypt? You know, the first thing that happened in Egypt was that water turned into water. I don't know, listen to this. Water turned into blood. In, 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 in Kana, water was turned into wine for life. In Egypt, water was turned into blood for punishment. Why? Because there were three gods in the Nile. There were three gods in the river. And this god that was there, one of the gods was the guardian of the river source. Where the, well, the, 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 the water started, there was a god that guarded that place. And there was another god that was called Happy, the spirit of the Nile. That the Nile had a particular spirit. So he was judging that. And there was Osiris. That is, the Nile was then his blood stream. Osiris was the life giver of that river. And God came to say, this God that you depend on, he's, he's having his last time now. I'm going to deal with it. The frogs. There was the frog goddess to Egypt. And this is another God. And both these gods, there were two. And the, others, the other one was for fertility. The gods that were there, frogs and lies, all these were different gods that they represented. I don't have time to give you the names of the ten gods. You can Google this, you'll find them. But I want to say, when God passed through, he dealt to the gods of Egypt. And when God passed by, he came or passed over, he saved the people of Israel. And this brings me to something very special. Why spend the evening indoors? Because that evening was an appointed time that God has made to pass over. But to pass through Egypt and pass over the children of Israel. And if God passes over, it means he's jumping over. He is not doing what he was doing to the other people on the outside. The same night, I like this, there are two things that happened the same night. The same night there was a passing over, the same night there was a passing through.
The same night, the firstborns of the Egyptians were perishing. The same night, the firstborns of the, of the children of Israel were being dedicated to God because he said, from today, all those that are firstborns in your families, they belong to me. Glory to God. And all those that are first, that cut the womb and become the first, even among your animals, those belong to me. So God was claiming ownership of the people of Israel. And what did he do? He said, I need that blood. And he says, I like this. And then he says, the blood will be signed for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. No destructive, destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. I like this protective measure that God made for his people in the face of destruction in the face of punishment, in the face of his visitation. What did God do? There was a, the last plague over Egypt out of the nine. The final one was more severe because it went straight to the firstborns in Egypt. And God dealt with them. Now he says then, I want that blood to be signed on your houses where you are. It doesn't say it's going to be signed on the houses where you have built them. Not the houses where you have built them. It is the houses where you are. Hence the question, will you be indoors for the evening or you'll be outdoor? The question says, will you be inside your house this evening? Because it is an appointed time for a passing through of God in a passing over of God. Blessed are those that will be found inside when God passes by. And the Bible says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you so that no destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. May I emphasize, God will pass through Egypt and God will pass over those who are indoors. I want to emphasize the importance of being indoors. When God passed through Egypt, the firstborns died. When God passed over Israel, the firstborns were dedicated to God. And again, when I see the blood, I want to bring this to our attention today. What will save us is not the name of my church. What will save me is not my position in church. I may be having titles to my name as many as I can acquire or as many as I can claim, as many as they can be bestowed upon me. That will not save me from the passing through of God. And God says, when I see the blood, listen to what he says. He says, I will pass over you. Not through you, I will pass over you. What is the message here? The message is, God doesn't say, I will be looking at you in the house. He will be less interested in us in the house. Ours is to take instruction to be inside the house. But it is God's responsibility to see or to look at what will save me. What saves me is not my work. It's not my deeds. It's not my effort. It is God's grace. He says, when he doesn't say, when I see Absalom inside, I will save him. When I see the pastors inside, when I see the saints inside. No, it's not about us. It's about the blood. And what he's interested in is to see the spotless blood. If God would look at me as Absalom, I want to tell you, I will perish in a twinkling of an eye. Blessed be the Lord our God and Savior Jesus Christ who shed his innocent blood so that when God looks at me, he doesn't see the me in me, but he sees the blood in me. And that is what will make God to pass over. We are here even in the midst of the perishing of people, in the midst of the plagues of Egypt, in the midst of the striking of the firstborns, in the midst of all the disaster that you are facing. What will save us is not our eloquence and our small churches, our medium-sized churches, or our big churches. It is the blood that God must see. 
Yes, I'm wearing a dark suit. That suit means nothing to God. Yes, I'm driving a big car. That big car doesn't mean anything to God. Yes, I've been preaching for years. My years of preaching mean nothing to God. What matters? When he looks, he turns towards the house where I am. He doesn't want to see my tie. He doesn't to see my wealth. He wants to see the blood. It is the blood that will make God overlook. Because passing over means I will overlook all that who you that you are. But the blood that covers you will make me spare your life. Praise the Lord. And today I want to say, those who will be saved and be delivered are those who take refuge to God. God is your refuge. Once you make him your refuge, he will cover you by the blood of the lamp. As he covers you with the blood of the lamp, come what may. Come what may. That blood bleeds your security. We don't use the blood like we are doing the incantations or the, 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 the definitions. Don't use the blood like these people out in the world. Just believe in God. Don't be saying, by the blood of Jesus and this and this. Yes, use the blood by faith. Not like you are using that blood like a person who is, I'm not going to be mentioning the offices of people here. But let's learn to apply by faith the blood of Jesus because tonight in the evening is either you are indoors or you are outdoors. Some people are outdoors are making so much noise and making so much fun about Christ, about God, about the church, about the people of the church. I must say there's a day called in the same evening. In the same evening. While I punish the Egyptians, I will be passing over you to spare you because I will be looking at nothing but the blood. What will save Absalom is not who he is. He's such a weak person. He's such a weak fellow. He's such a failure in life. But because he's such a person who trusts in God, who believes in God, who, who leans on God, he only trusts one thing. I'm here because of the blood of the Lamb. And when I am in those, that's my safety. And what does that mean? It simply means God will overlook who I am and see Jesus who covers me up. There's death outside. There's people are perishing out there. And I can only invite you. Where will you be this evening? Will you be indoors or outdoors? Can we just go inside? Just be inside. Just be inside. When God passes by, he will pass over you. I want to pray for you today. And I want to encourage those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to take refuge in Christ. It's not by might and not by power. And I don't want you to be following people who are claiming to be great. It's not about greatness here. It's about faith in God. It's not about how many miracles I've performed. It's not about miracles. It's not about miracles. It's about God. It's about your relationship with God. How to relate with God? Sinful as I am, I cannot. When I come to him, he cleanses me, washes me, purifies me, sanctifies me by the blood of the Lamb. Where will you be this evening? Indoors or outdoors? Let's step inside. This blood over the doorpost. And this is our salvation. Shall we pray? As we pray, I just want to invite you, please, wherever you are, to say, Lord, I'm shaking. I'm panicking. I don't know about my destiny. I don't know where I'm going to. I don't know what will happen to me. Will I perish with the Egyptians? Or will I be saved with the children of Abraham? Will I be out in the streets, chilling with other people out there? Or will I be indoors? So that at this moment, at least at this moment, I will be saved. Remember, they did not eat a relaxing. They were in the departure mode. They were in the takeoff mode. Soon and very soon, we shall be taken. Soon and very soon. That's why we have to be on the departure mode. God bless you. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, I just want to pray 
and commit each one of those that are saying, I want to be indoors in these days of turmoil, in these days of storms, in these days when there's so much that we cannot be able to overcome. Pharaoh tried everything, but he failed. At the end, God was the God of Israel. God was the final God of our humanity. And God decided himself to deal with all the arrogance, the insolence of Pharaoh and his people. I want to pray for everyone whose heart is touched, who says, for too long I've been outdoors. It's time to be indoors now. As I step in to be part of those who are indoors, I want Jesus to wash me, to cleanse me, to purify me, to sanctify me, and make me acceptable so that when God looks at me, he will overlook all that I am and accept what Jesus has done for me. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.